fasten your seatbelts as you will need full attention to master the class syntax of ES6. This video starts with introducing prototypal inheritance, including a reference implementation in ES5. We will then take this implementation and transform it to ES6 using the class syntax. After this implementation, you will learn about shadowing and abstract classes in more detail. We will conclude this video by implementing getters, setters and static methods. Judgment on the class syntax or offering alternatives are beyond the scope of this video. Some people seem to have launched a holy war against classes, others applaud them as it makes JavaScript appear similar to languages like Java or C Sharp. Regardless of what you think about classes, not knowing the class syntax is a disadvantage from the perspective of your career. However, knowing the class syntax without knowing how prototypal inheritance works is a disadvantage as well. Therefore, we will now discuss prototypal inheritance and constructor functions. Let's start with an example where we implement a classical inheritance scenario in JavaScript. Shape is a constructor function accepting a color argument. Calling shape with the new operator would create a shape object. Each shape object has access to the getColor method. We can define concrete shapes such as rectangles, triangles or circles having specific properties. In this example, we will create a rectangle. Rectangles have a color, a width and a height. As a rectangle is a shape, we will also call the shape constructor with the context of the rectangle and the argument list of shape. In order to fully implement the rectangle is a shape statement, we have to set up the prototype chain such that the prototype of rectangle is linked to the prototype of shape. We will also define a getArea method for all rectangle objects. We instantiate a class with the new operator creating an object out of it. In ES5 terminology, constructor functions return new objects having defined properties and operations. Even in ES5, constructor functions and their prototype extensions were often referred to as classes. Classes or constructor functions are written with uppercase letters. Objects start with lowercase. This is not a mandatory rule to enforce by the interpreter, just a convention worth following. We can call the getArea method of our rectangle, which will multiply its width and its height. Prototypal inheritance is defined between shape and rectangle, because a rectangle is a shape. Therefore, we can call the getColor method of a rectangle, even though it is defined for shapes. Prototypal inheritance is implicitly defined between object and shape. As the prototype chain is transitive, we can call the toString built-in method on a rectangle object, even though it comes from the prototype of object. If this example is your first encounter with constructor functions in JavaScript, you may conclude that it is not too intuitive to read it. Especially the two lines building the prototype chain seem far too complex to write for defining inheritance. The definition of classes are also separated. We define the constructor and other methods in different places. Let's see the ES6 version. Mind you, the two versions are not equivalent, we just describe the same problem domain with ES6 code. The shape constructor function becomes a class. Contents of the constructor function on the right are placed inside a constructor method. Notice the concise method syntax. This syntax is required for class methods to work properly. The getColor method is placed inside the class. Now that we are ready with shape, it's time to continue with the rectangle constructor. The prototype hierarchy is specified with the extends keyword. Inside the constructor, we can call the parent constructor using super. This is a more semantic notation than the two lines responsible for linking rectangle and shape on the right. After specifying the getArea method, 
we can execute the code. The code on the left works in the same way as the ES5 solution. The two versions are not fully equivalent, we just describe the same problem domain with ES6 code. If you want to study an equivalent implementation, place your solution into the online editor of babeljs.io slash repl and observe how Babel translates ES6 into ES5. You can find the ES6 code among the code examples belonging to chapter 4. Let's summarize the basics of classes. Classes may encapsulate a constructor function and additional methods. Methods were described as prototype extensions in ES5. We can also refer to the parent prototype and parent constructor using the extends and super keywords respectively. We can also refer to the parent prototype and parent constructor using the extends and super keywords. Instantiation works in the exact same way as using an ES5 constructor function. A final stylistic note is that your code becomes more readable when you capitalize class names and start object names and method names with a lowercase letter. Calling super in a constructor should happen before accessing the value of this. As a rule of thumb, call super as the first thing in the constructor of a class defined with extents. If you fail to call super, an error will be thrown. If you don't define a constructor in a class defined with extents, one will automatically be created for you calling super with the argument list of the constructor. To illustrate how super works, let's create class A with a constructor console logging the string A. Let's create class B extending class A and in the constructor let's leave out the super call. When instantiating B, the constructor of class B is executed. As the extends keyword only works if there is a super call inside the constructor, at the end of the constructor a reference error is thrown. Let's try to add this super call. Well, this didn't work out as expected, as B is block scoped and we are not allowed to redeclare it. Anyway, by creating B1 and instantiating it, you can see that both constructors were executed. Even though best practices suggest that the super call is the first line of the constructor, it is not mandatory. We can also place it after the console log and the code works as expected. If we create a class C extending A and we don't specify a constructor, we can still instantiate it. An implicit super call to the constructor of A is added to class C automatically. This example will illustrate shadowing. Methods of the parent class can be redefined in the child class. The user class has a constructor and the has access method. The super user class is an extension of user. We can redefine the has access method in super user, shadowing the has access method of user. Let's create a super user and check if the super user has access to the admin dashboard. The return value is true, meaning that the has access method of super user was executed. If we create a user object and call its has access method, the return value is undefined, which is a false value. Moving on to the next topic. Abstract classes are classes that cannot be instantiated. For instance, recall the shape class in the previous example. Until we know what kind of shape we are talking about, we cannot do much with a generic shape. There is no ES6 language support for abstract classes. However, we can use the new.target property to prevent an abstract class from getting instantiated by throwing an error. The new.target property is accessible in the constructor and it gives you a reference to the class that was used next to the keyword to create an object. In other words, new.target refers to the class whose constructor was first called in the inheritance chain. Getters and setters are used to create computed properties. We will now create a square class with a width property. Let's define an area getter method that computes the area of the square. After instantiating the square, 
we can get access to its area property. Square.area calls the getter method and returns the result. The area property only has a getter. Setting area does not change anything as area is a computed property that depends on the width of the square. For the sake of demonstrating setters, let's define a height computed property. After the getter and setter methods are defined for height, it can be used as regular properties of a square object. The width and height values are kept in sync using the height getter and setter. There are multiple advantages of getters and setters. First of all, computed fields can be derived using an algorithm depending on other properties. Getters and setters hide information as they do not expose properties that are retrievable or settable through getters or setters. Getters and setters encapsulate related functionality. We keep these definitions constant and reliable while you are free to change the internal representation used for computing these fields. This comes handy when dealing with a DOM structure, for instance, where the DOM template may change. You can also debug your code more easily with getters and setters. Just add debugging comments or breakpoints to a setter and you will know what caused a value to change. Static methods are operations defined on a class. These methods can only be referenced from the class itself, not from objects. We can add the static method to a class by using the static keyword. In this example, we will return a new instance of the C class by calling the create method. We have to call static methods from the class itself. Static methods are not accessible from the created objects. If we still try to access static methods, we get a runtime type error. We have covered a lot in this lesson. First, we compared prototypal inheritance and the class syntax. We learned how inheritance can be specified in ES6 by using the extends keyword and the supercall in constructors. Method shadowing, abstract classes, getters, setters, and static methods completed the overview on the new class syntax of ES6. Don't forget the concise method syntax notation introduced in this chapter. We will learn more about this syntax in lesson 7 on objects. In the next video, you will get a chance to put the class syntax into practice by solving some exercises.